What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets. Hope everybody's having an excellent weekend. The weather has been beautiful in New Jersey, so it's nice to finally get a chance to go to the beach. Thank you for watching our content. We definitely appreciate it. Obviously, we're going into a quiet time right now. The team has, you know, you have the OTAs, you have, you know, mandatory mini camps next month. But everybody's kind of, there's not really a lot to talk about, to be honest with you. So we're not going to generate some nonsense you don't want to see. So I have some interviews lined up that'll be a little interesting. We'll do the man cave thing that we promised for about three months, which has been my fault due to scheduling. So stay tuned for all that. Also, on Friday, down at DJ's in Belmar, WFAN is going to be there. All their shows are there all day long. So if anybody's going to that, let me know, because I'll probably be popping in throughout the day. So if you're there, let me know. We'll, you know, stop by, have say, say hi, have a beer. Um, this video is about a, a conclusion of my series where I interviewed fans about a series of topics, and it's about the make or break year for a player. And obviously, when you say make or break year, two names came up immediately. The first one was wide receiver Denzel Mims. Now, when Mims was drafted, Jets fans were ecstatic. He had a, you know, a decent rookie year where you were encouraged, but like, you know what? That's his first year. Year two in this offense with Michael Thor, he's going to take off and show what he's really made of. And unfortunately, it didn't happen. And it was either, you know, you had the food poisoning, you had COVID, you had learning new offense, you had route running, you had rumors about work ethic, all kinds of different things. But when the team was decimated by injuries, he still wasn't seeing playing time. And when he did see playing time, he had like dumb penalties and drop passes. So it's been a nightmare. So going into this year, he's not guaranteed any money so the Jets can cut him. And it's not going to be a huge cap hit. And now they brought in an influx of talent, too. So you have your Corey Davis, Berrios, Elijah Moore, and Garrett Wilson. So Mims is not only fighting for a, ro a playing time. He's fighting for a roster spot because he, really, he doesn't play special teams. So he has all the talent in the world. So what's going to happen? And to me, honestly, it is a make or break. He, this, this could happen by training camp. I mean, if he doesn't come in, you know, like a man on a mission, just showing the world that what he's made of, he may not even make the opening day roster, in my opinion. Now, I've been wrong a million times before. And I know, understand people want to keep him due to depth. But when you get passed by Jeff Smith and Vincent Smith and Tyreek Black, it's not a good look. So to me, people that answer Den Denzel Mims, they're 100% correct. I agree with them. The next ma uh, name that was mentioned a lot was Makai Becton. And this one, again, Makai Becton right now with Jet fans is a polarizing figure because you have a portion of the fan base that loves him and a portion of the fan base that is so down on him that that's ready to move on to me. And it's just... I understand both sides. To me, honestly, I think that Beckham's going to come back a man on a mission, but he's going to play right tackle. Now, in terms of is it a make or break year, it's only year three. I mean, year one, he played, he showed glimpses of being a pro bowler, and year two, he didn't play. So you can't, I mean, like, what do we, you can't write him off this year. I mean, this year, you got to see him come back, obviously, in shape. You want to see him, you know, stay healthy all season long. And I understand last year was a freak injury. Stay healthy all year long. And then, I like, again, I would love to see him win the left tackle spot. I just don't see it happening. But if he does play right tackle, dominate. Play very well. But if he play, even if he plays average or above average, he's still coming back next year. I, I, I would be shocked if, if Mekhi Beck is not a Jet next year. So for that being said, I don't think it's a make or break year. Two more players that are quite interesting, though, are also mentioned. Next one is Corey Davis. Now, Corey Davis was a player that many mentioned to be as underrated, but he has no guaranteed money going in next year. So what does that mean? It means after this year, if he doesn't break out, he could be gone as well. Now, he was a team captain. He showed a lot of good things. He could be a veteran leader for the Elijah Moores and the Garrett Wilson. So I think he has a lot of value, but he also has to earn his contract and live up to the stats. I mean, he's got to put up, you know, his 60, 70 catches. He's got to play 17, you know, just say 15 games at this point. You'd be happy with that. But I think there is pressure on Corey Davis to, you know, warrant the money that was given to him. Another guy, and a guy that I like, is Carl Lawson, who's not guaranteed money next year either. So, A, he had an unfortunate injury last year. And I'm a Carl Lawson fan. He adds a dynamic to this team where it's like, it's an elite game-breaking talent on the outside that can disrupt the game. So if he plays, if he stays healthy this year and contributes a lot, you know, that could be significant, uh, be enough to bring him back next year. If not, and Jermaine Johnson, all these young pups can play very well then you know what? Carl Lawson could be gone. So it could be a make or break year for him in terms of living up to his contract. And the last one is Zach Wilson. And this one I could not disagree with more, but I will explain it. Make or break means if they don't play well this year, play good enough, they could be gone next year. Wilson's going to be back next year no matter what. With that being said, I think that last year was very rocky. This year we all expect a significant step up. And that significant step up doesn't mean Pro Bowl quarterback, top 12 quarterback, top 15. To me, it means top 20. I mean, play, you know, 16, 17 games, 
manage the game, become a leader, run the offense efficiently, and start putting up consistent performances week in and week out, and you know, reduce limit your turnovers. And I think he can do that. You're not asking a lot, especially when you consider all the pieces that have been added around him. You're going to have a running game, an improved offensive line. You have tight ends now that you haven't had in friggin' a decade, and you have good receivers. So I think the expectation for Zach Wilson is play better this year. And I think year three, I think next year will be the make or break year where you're like, you know what? You better show us you're a franchise quarterback or we have some problems. This year isn't that year. There are increased expectations, but we're not going to be shipping them out. So again, I, Mims, I agree with. Beckton, I don't. Corey Lawson and Carl Davis, definitely they have to play well enough to justify bringing them back next year. Zach Wilson, I agree with. Uh, there are mentions of like players like Ashton Davis and guys like that. And I mean, I'm, I'm over that experience. Like some of these guys, I know that you were high on them in the draft and you tried, tried to buy into them, but some of them just aren't, you know, to me, they aren't panning out. But uh, this video became six minutes long and I have absolutely no idea how. So that means I rambled too much. So I apologize for that. Have a good day.